I want to introduce the song and present to others to many. He is no stranger, even if you have not heard him or personally met him. He is a uh, YouTube sensation. He is a brotherhood sensation. He's my oldest brother and he's one of my closest friends. Amen. Uh, we grew up together and we uh, walked together and he came up north so I had to come up north. And I was raised in the South Shall Rise Again. Amen. Amen. The South Shall Rise Again. Amen. So we tried to hold the Northeast down. Amen. So he's in New Jersey. I'm in Connecticut. Uh, we get a couple more. Everything will be all right. Amen. Uh, Brother Chris Turner is one of God's greatest gifts uh, to the body of Christ. He comes to us tonight not as a singing preacher, but he comes as a preaching singer. Amen. Many of you have heard him sing, but you have not been uh, blessed to hear him preach. He is just as good of a preacher as he is a singer. And there ain't many of us left. Amen. There ain't a whole lot of singing preachers left, like I said, amen. Amen. But uh, he's going to come in his own way tonight. I only ask one thing of him. He's going to preach. I want him to preach. That's why he's here. But he got to do a piece of something. Amen. Uh, it's a piece of something. Uh, and then when he's here tomorrow night, he's going to give us a bigger piece. But just, just a little piece of something. But at this time... I'm going to have to bring Christopher Turner all the way from the Sunset Road Church of Christ in Willingburg, Burlington, New Jersey, and is doing a wonderful work down there. Chris, is, his, his congregation has grown so much that people are now sitting in the basement uh, just to come and hear the word of God. He uh, have members of his congregation, not that one is above the other, but uh, the star linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles is a member of his congregation. Uh, and it's a wonderful thing when you can have such influence on many people who think they don't need the Lord because they got it made in some areas of life, but yet he can reach out across the aisles and across the brotherhood and social economic lines and pull people in. So he is a gifted talent in the body of Christ. So like a song or two songs, however y'all want to do it, you just do it the way you do it. The next voice you will hear will be that of my brother and my friend, Brother Christopher Turner, amen. amen. All right. All right, I asked him a question, but anyway. Can y'all help, help me say something real quick here? I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna belabor the point, but I want to hear Chris preach to you. Amen. Amen. Ooh. Ooh. He don't raise us, whatever he is. Ooh, watch ye there, oh, you know not the day. Oh! 
people of God when I come to the house of God. When I stand here to bear witness, we got any girl. And it is my pleasure. It, I'm really happy to be here on such an auspicious. in the presence of my brother Marcus T. Watkins and my brother Harold Robinson. Y'all know I'm on cloud nine, so if I act up and bubble over, that's all right. Just understand he is hallelujah happy. See, you have, you have to know what I know and have seen what I've seen and been where I've been. No longer. 
this here. And the history serves itself, right? It ought to be a double portion. But I don't know what the brother did. See, you ought to have twice as many folks up in here as Brother Marcus gets through. You ought to have twice as many blessings in here. before. He's seen some things. And here we are in verse number 8 of chapter 6 in 2 Kings. If you have your Bible, if you have the scripture, say amen. 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 If you get trying to get there, say hold up. Hold on, I pray. The Bible says in verse number 8, then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servant, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God said to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not in such a place, for there the Syrians are going to attack you. They're waiting to ambush you there. I'm paraphrasing. And then in verse number 10, the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him and saved himself there not once nor twice. Every time the Syrian king, the enemy of God, planned something against the people of God, the prophet of God will tell the king of Israel, don't go down that way, go that way. They're waiting on you over there. So, 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 so finally, the heart, verse number 11, this didn't happen once nor twice. It happened at least three times and maybe more. Verse 11 says, therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, somebody's on the other team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Somebody's in my locker room and they got another jersey on under my jersey. <laughs> Can somebody please tell me who's on the other side? Who's, who's, who's giving up our secrets? Who's telling the plays to the other team? And verse number 12, one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet. Eli Which one of us is for the king of Israel? He thought he had a problem with the king. It wasn't the king. It was not the government that he had a problem with. It, 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 no, it wasn't. It was not the king that he had a problem with. It was the prophet. It wasn't the government, it was the man of God. And one of the servants said, None, my Lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Man, he knows everything you say, even in your bedroom. Oh, yeah. Well, let me go. And verse 13, and he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent the horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city round about. Brother uh, Watkins, what's the sister's name that, uh, that had us over at her beautiful home today? Eva. Sister Eva. She is really from Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> All I got to do is get one spoon for a life. <laughs> she took me back. Yes, Thank you so much. And if, uh, if I got the itis that Brother Marcus and Brother Harold going to sleep on me, it's because of Sister Eva. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, son. Bless us. What you. We used to do that kind of stuff. Yes, Amen. Yes, 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 yes. You're blessed me. You're blessed me. Yes, sir. And I want to thank her for that personally and publicly. Yes. I want to thank her personally. I want to let y'all know she's a kitchen mechanic. <laughs>
Let me go on and tell the story. Let me tell the story. So, so, so the kid decided to go and get Elijah. Yeah. 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 Do you see who he sent? Come on, come on. He said, right about where he is, that I can go and fetch him. He's in Dothan. He's held up in Dothan. He's hiding out in Dothan. That's what you think. Yeah. He's not hiding. He's in Dothan. Yeah. And he's not worried. So the king sent, verse 14, horses, chariot, a great host. You know what a host is? <laughs> not going to mind, Mr. Roy, your host. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to say I didn't. No, 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 no. A host in this context is an army. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He sent not just a regiment. He sent a bunch of a whole bunch of ancient guardians and gay birds. Bunch. A lot. Plenty. He said, if I thought about it, a soldier, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you the Bible, I'm going to show you that there was a whole lot of them. It was a great host because, and then uh, uh, they snuck in. Go on. 
Elijah knew that Elisha would get it. Elisha knew that this young man who would work with him would one day see what it was all about. And here is his day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That young man had a panic. Elisha made a promise. Then they prayed and God protected. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. I want you to see this young man walking out in verse number 15 and the servant of the man of God was risen up early. Uh -huh. He was going forth and behold and host that army yes. come past the city both with horses and chariots. Yes. And the servant, I don't know what his servant's duties were. Uh -huh. I don't know what his servant's responsibilities were, but hey! Yeah. 
darkness. So it goes to 60 miles north of Jerusalem. And Elisha is held up there. And, and the young man wakes up in the pre-dawn hours. And he gets so nervous. And he gets scared. And he says, what shall we do? What are we going to do? And many times we ask the same question today. Because we really forget sometimes and seem to who I am. What are we going to do? The church needs this, but we ain't got the money. What are we going to do? My daddy owned the world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Did you ask me that? Yeah. My father is rich in houses and land. He holds the power of the world in his hands. Ask your daddy. When perverted power uh -huh, holds the influence, mm -hmm. what shall we do? When the scales of justice and fairness are in balance, for one excuse or another, call it what you want. What shall we do? Yeah. When mean-spirited people speak, people speak slander and blasphemy with ungodly uh -huh. audacity. Mm -hmm. yeah. What shall we do? Yeah. When gripped by the terrible twins of helplessness and hopelessness, what are we going to do? Yeah. What are we going to do? What shall we do when those who really want to follow God are continually crushed mm -hmm. by people who hold to traditions of men yes, more sir. so than the word of God. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Call on our daddy. When these words stumble out of the servant's mouth, Elisha, the man of God, simply stood on the strength that comes from another neighborhood and said, oh, that's, that's all they got? Come on now. Yeah. Don't worry about that boy. Uh -huh. And then Elisha made him a promise. He says, there are more that are with us yes, than they that are with him. Yes, sir. And of course, like some of y'all, like they were in Burlington, New Jersey. When I got there, I said, first thing I said, I, I got to town before they knew I was in town. I ain't crazy. I got a GPS. I called them two, three hours after I've been down here. Oh, do you know how to get to so and so? Maybe so. I'm sitting in the parking lot. <laughs> first thing I need to tear this building down. Huh? Oh, you ever do? You don't know my dad. This ain't gonna be big enough. All right. This ain't gonna This ain't gonna what God's planning to do. Oh, you crazy. Where you gonna get all the people from? Oh, you better tell the people that. Three months later. Who are these people? Yeah. Where did they come from? Yeah. A year later. What are we gonna do? Do we, do, we, do we build on? Do we take them down? Do we need to buy one? Do we need to move? Yeah. Two years later. The basement is full. The aisle is full. The foyer is full. The top full. I said, Tony, tell them I'm there. Yeah. Show you better, I can tell you. <laughs> Last six meetings we've had. What are we gonna do about the space? Should we go to the senior center? We're we gonna buy that old electric drug up there. We're we'll about to chairs, but I'm gonna fix it up with like a section right till we build one down here. Mm -hmm. right. Just because you can't see it does not mean it does not exist. Right. That's, right. That's, right. That's what I'm trying to say. The young man probably looked at it like that. Oh, Lord, my master doesn't have all the time. He's seen that. Something's going on with him. He ain't right today. Yeah. He's dreaming. Wake up, wake up, look. So, 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 oh. the preacher was preaching, and he was preaching about the Lord Jesus and how that God was going to do what he was going to do. And, and then some man stood back in the, in, the, you know, in the audience and said, God doesn't exist. I've never seen him. And the street preacher was perplexed. He said, can you show me God? And then one old man jumped up in the back. He said, hey. They tell me there is green grass on the next corner. I don't believe it exists. They tell me that there's a bus that comes around here about 5 o'clock every evening. I don't believe it. I've never seen it. In fact, you people don't exist. For I've never seen you. You see, I'm a blind man. And the more 
motorcycle like it fell off, and we're running a thousand and don't even stumble, ah, you must be crazy. God exists. Come on, yes, come on. Yes. That was some time back when I was here. No. But the more people say that God doesn't exist, the more to me it proves that he does. Just because you can't see it, then I mean it does not exist. Right? So God had to, Elisha had to say something that I'm trying to say to you tonight. Lord, open this young boy. Lord, I want you to open his eyes. I have already promised him that there are more of us than there are of them. Even though there are two of us and they surrounded the city. We got some stuff that they can't see that might work against them. I want you to understand when you work for God and you truly respond to the message of God and you really want to serve him, there will be opposition. Yes, there will be conflict, but you need to remain steadfast because God is always going to win. Yes, they are not opposing us if we're on the Lord's side. They are opposing God. Yes, Daniel was in a den of lions and he thought, uh, whatever God does, God does. But this one thing I do know, you can't need God. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're on the Lord's side, you understand that your battles are not yours. They belong to the Lord. The folks at the Sunset Church say, this can't be done, and that can't be done. I just say, you don't know my daddy, do you? You don't know my father. I promise. I was sitting up in Bible class one, one Sunday evening, uh, one of this place tonight, the young folks like to come hang around. I said, you know what? I was so mean to Jack Evans. I love being a brother Evans. I love Brother Evans. He's a good brother. But I said something about he and some folks. I said that Brother Evans has been out there with Terrell all these years and get mad at T.D. Jack for not baptizing him Smith and Deion, Deion Sanders and all the cowboys. I said, God will hold me accountable if I don't baptize some eagles. I don't want to go get Michael Vick. This you put. <laughs> Guess what? I didn't get a big cat. <laughs> <laughs> that next night, next Wednesday night, there was a big old brother sitting up in, in the church house with some big old thick arms. You know, shoulders like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, boy, look at you with the big old arms like I used to have when I was here. A lad of a boy. <laughs> I said, well, actually, my arms weren't that big. I just wish they were. I said, who are you? What the big old brother? I said, what do you know about this mother? 
You know Pam Williams, Smotherman. You know, I said, Pledge and Alvin, let's see how she lit up. I said, Pledge and Alvin got Pledge and Alvin Jr. That, was, that should be about her age. I'm like, hmm. That guy struck a chord there. You know me. I said, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> well, I grew up right around Nashville. Anyway, she's married to Carrie Williams on the Eagle. I said, bring your husband back, because uh, he's going to need some prayers. She's a member. I'm saying that even though he's not yet. I don't care what you can't see. I've been sending messages over there to the locker room for a whole year. I've been in the locker room over there fussing. Jerry Reed, I ain't no coach, but that's some dumb stuff you're doing over there. <laughs> Jerry gone, y'all. They won the other night. Let me go. Huh? Moses and Israel has their backs against the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14. Moses said the same thing that Elisha said. Fear not. Yeah. Exodus 14, 13. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Why? Oh, God can't be dressed. Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that God couldn't be burned. Yeah. Oh, king, if you keep messing with Elisha, Elisha is not in trouble. You are. Yeah. Jesus said, if you've done anything to the least of my brethren, you have, not, you have done it unto me. If God be for us, who can be against us? I promise you that on the Lord's side, there are more of us than there are with them. Yes. So then Elisha said, Lord, verse 17, uh, help the young man cease his death. Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Here is a young man who has panicked. The church will panic because things aren't like they used to be. A church might panic because there's a new idea, there's a new spirit going on. Not that it's bad, but it's just not the one you had. And they panic. And then the, the vision giver will give the vision to the visionary, and he'll say, open their eyes so they can see what I see. They don't understand. I promise you that the Lord is in this thing, and watch what the Lord will do. The prophet says not to panic, just pray. Instead, he says, let him see what I see. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Let them know what I know. Yes. Let them see what I saw. He can see the visible, but he needs to see the invisible. Yes, sir. He sees the temporal. Let him see some of the eternal. Yes, yes, Open his eyes that he might see. He sees defeat and destruction. We are going in over our heads. Now, what are we going to do? God's got it. God's got it. He sees doubt and disillusion. How come to see faith and certainty? Yes, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and yes. sound mind. Yes. He sees the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, have to see goodness and mercy. Yes. Yes. you never had before, sometimes you have to do something you never done before. I said every now and then you got to come in here with the spirit of newness. You will come in here and see the same old sock laying in the floor. You so used to the sock laying in the floor. You don't even know it's not supposed to be there. Somebody just trying to put that sock up and mend it up with the other sock. Well, who moved my sock? We ain't never had two songs before. We ain't doing things. You should have on us. Which one was the extra song? <laughs> Which one of them was the song? I had some folk walk out on me one time. And, and, and not, not me, but the song leader. And they just could not appreciate the song that was being sang. And the next week they got back, I said, what y'all leave here for? Well, we didn't appreciate it. They never do it. They never, they never do it. I said, you remember what song it was? <laughs> no. I said, well, let me tell you what it was. The song was, I love to praise him. Oh, yeah. Now, had you died, you left it before you gave. You left it before you did communion. You left it before I got into the pulpit because when I got up, the song was being finished and I was getting ready to start speaking. So you did about two items of worship. When you have died, which 
praise you this Sunday and last Sunday. What are you going to tell God? I don't like them singing. I love to praise you. I didn't think about that. Yeah. What do you think God would say? What do you think they're going to be doing for the next two or three million years up here? You walk out of here. It's a long drive. Before prayer. That's out of order. Say out somewhere. That's out of order. He sees it right now. Lord, damn, see it out of the crowd. I got one brother I call the old soul. Boy, he rough. Nobody was best with him. And I treat him like he wasn't his age. I had to say something to him, though. He got up on a chalkboard and said, What we were going to do, and then what we weren't going to do. I said, Sign. Talking about, I was in the military. I said, Well, uh, if I came in uh, out of college as a second lieutenant and you're a sergeant and you've been in the service for 20 years, you got to obey the younger lieutenant. <laughs> My ranking supersedes what you're talking about. Yeah. Now, I don't mean to be ugly, but you don't see what I see. Yeah. No, we're not going to extend the building out 10 feet this way and 10 feet that way. Yeah. Mm. I'm looking about a thousand. You're trying to get 21 people in here. We'll have that next month. <laughs> and everybody in there looked at me, you know, you got to put the meanest one first. So the other folks go, he crazy. <laughs> he said, that's brother so-and-so. Brother so-and-so got in there that next day, which was Sunday, and he did the clothes and bread, Lord. <laughs> Bless our little minister. <laughs> and yeah, he got yes. That's how I look at him. Ain't had anybody talk to me like that before. He's praying. <laughs> Yeah. When I think about Hartford 
Connecticut. That's a major city. Yeah. That's a major area. We all got an international airport around here. You got folks coming in there from everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I heard the L is close by. You got some smart folk that need the Lord. I heard that some businesses close by. You got some business folk that need the Lord. I heard y'all got a team or two close by. You got some folk that get paid millions of dollars to play. To play. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to get you to see some things. When Elijah prayed, God answered. The Lord answered, and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. He saw. He sees a mountain full of horses. Yeah. But these horses didn't come from the stable that the king of Syria's horses came from. He sees royal steeds yes. from the stable of his majesty on high. He sees regal horses, and he hears the hoofbeats of eternity. Yes. He sees unusual chariots. Yes. These chariots are chariots of fire. Yes. Uh, good grief again. I didn't see them at first. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And these horses and chariots have a missionary purpose. Watch this now. They are not doing battle with the Syrian host. They're simply gathered around about Elisha. And they have surrounded the Syrians. That's what Elisha saw. Yeah. Oh, we got more than that. Come on. And their chariots aren't even on fire. <laughs> I've seen these chairs before when they light jump. Uh -huh. Let's take it away. Yeah. Yeah. I knew they'd be here. Yeah. When God gives his servant a vision, yeah. work with the Lord. Yeah. He is spending his time in prayer. Uh -huh. He is spending the time with Elijah, Brother Freeman Malone, Billy Washington, Reginald Doolin, and Leroy Butler, and Charlie McClendon, and Willie P. Jackson, and all the preachers that he's worked with before that have, he's called their mantles. He's got all the information in there. Work along with him because God is trying to take you somewhere with this. Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. 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 He sees some things that you may not understand. When I'm in the war, war I'm not just buying coffee. I got a coffee machine at the house. Looking for souls. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for prospects. Yeah. You really in there buying a Snicker bar trying to satisfy us. <laughs> he sees some folks that you haven't thought about asking to come to church. Yeah. And when they talk to you, the preacher here, yeah. But you were playing ball at the court the other day, yeah. yeah. I invited you over here. I didn't tell you I was a minister. You didn't even know that. I just want to know who you come. Yeah. Pastor, so we ain't got no pastor. <laughs> Let the people be respectful. Yes, sir. That's yes, what they know to do. Yes, you be calling me by my first name and they think you've been sacrilegious. Yes, Wait till I teach them. Let them learn. Yes, Let them learn. Yes, Let them learn. Yes, Let them learn. Yes, they in here. You didn't bring them. Oh. <laughs> what are we going to do with your life and campaign? Well, I wish I would come to your neighborhood and I want somebody to do it. You've been living there 35 years. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And things will get 
done. Yes. So they prayed. He prayed and the young man's eyes were open. Some of us can't see because we don't pray. Right. Some of us went to school and think we got it all together. The Bible says if any man lack knowledge, let him ask of the teacher in school. Wait a minute. The Bible says that. James chapter 1, the Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, which is the proper application of knowledge, let him ask God, who gives it to all and upbraideth not. If you got education and no common sense, no mother wit, amen. We used to call them educated F word. But the Bible says, don't call people that. And it sounded like, ooh, in the middle. But what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is when God opened your eyes, you can really see some stuff. And you're really, let me move on. The protection, verse 18, verse 18, verse 18, verse 18, verse 18. Verse 18, verse 18. These armies are out there together. The Syrian army surrounded the city, and God's army is surrounding the Syrian army. You see what I said? Yes, and when they came yes. down to him, the prayer man prayed again. First, I need to met, let my young man know that me and God got this. Yes, if I was in the equation, God got it. Yes. Yes. Watch this now. It's good to be on praying terms with God. Yes. Your mama should have told you that. Amen. My dear now, big mama now, mama now. Mm -hmm. Mother and father taught us that. <laughs> if you're in contact with God, you can get a lot of things done. Yes. I think one of the writers in the Bible said, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. So what I want you to know is, he prayed, and that army that was not attacking the Syrian army, sometimes we pray and we want God to handle it like we want to handle it. Whoa, Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm just going to stand here and dare and move. <laughs> That's what God's army was doing to the Syrian army. It was not attacking the Syrian army. It was standing there like a big brother. Not mess with it. You know how bold you get when your big brother's standing there? And the bully don't know that's your brother. You start talking smack then. What? What? Then? What? on the cross, those same folks. He said, I can call seven legions, uh, 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 12 legions of angels, 720,000 angels, and some horsemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I didn't want to do this, I could call them. They're set and ready to go. All I got to do is say, go. I said, when Mark get set, if I say go, they're coming. Yes. Oh, yeah. When, when Jesus was on the cross, they were ready. When Elisha is standing here and they're trying to get him, they're ready. All he has to do is say, get him. Yeah. Don't hurt him. Blind. I want him to sin, I want them to be blind. <laughs> well, that Elijah is a bad boy. Watch this now. And this is the protection. We had the panic. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? The promise. There are more of us than there are with him. The prayer. You already have them to see what I see. And here comes the protection. God is always at the end of the equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And as the army made a move toward Elijah, he turned to God and his real resources, and he says, get him. The imagery here is more subtle than it appears in English. God struck the army with blindness. The Hebrew word translated blindness is not the normal word for lack of physical sight. This Hebrew word really should have been translated to dazzle, yeah. with the implication of confusion. <laughs> 
describe a night animal dazzled or confused by bright light. You know, like a deer stuck in the headlight. They came to get Elisha. He can see the car coming. He just been struck dumb. The intent here is that God did not physically blind the Syrian, but he prevented the army sent to capture Elisha from, capt from recognizing him when they met him. Yeah. And again, we humorously, humorously discover that Elijah's opposition is not very astute. First of all, they're ready to attack someone. Go to the next verse. That they didn't even know. Yeah. You know what that means? Elijah said, who are y'all looking for? <laughs> they said, Elisha. Elisha said, he ain't home. <laughs> <laughs> no Elisha here today. Just 
stay with him. He'll take you to heights that you didn't even know you could soar to if you just hook on to his coattail. God has got stuff for you to do and stuff for you to see. Hartford, uh, Northside, he wants to bless this community and you're the catalyst of the blessing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are we going to do with him? You want us to smite him? Remember when the story first started, the boy said, what are we going to do? Yeah. When the devil get his hands on you, before it's over, you're going to be like, what do you want to do with the devil? Yeah. 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 They were asking, what do you want to do with them? Yeah. Shall we kill him? <laughs> he said, nah. Elijah said, let's kill him with kindness. Yeah. Mm. He had a big barbecue the next couple of verses and sent him on back home. They cooked them something to eat and sent them back. You know that was a testimony. Yes, sir. When they got back to the king of Syria, he probably could not send them back over there at Israel again yes, with the same vigor and the same muscle and the same attitude and arrogance that they had. <coughs> we don't want to go over there, king. <laughs> Strange things happen when you mess with the people of God. You end up downtown in the Capitol building surrounded. Amen. Amen. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. Show me something. Yes, yes. Show me something. Show me something, Lord. Where are you going to get it from? God will supply. If you just supply your heart. Yes. What I want to leave you with tonight is look for it. Look for it. Sometimes God is showing us stuff that we can't see because we're not looking for it. The one that needs to be saved passed you in the hall and you didn't speak. <laughs> the next benefactor to this congregation was at the red light beside you and you looked at him and, and, and you didn't speak. The next one that needs to bless you is the one you had the meeting with after school with your child. Amen. My English teacher came to church three weeks ago in Burlington, New Jersey. I freaked. I'm sorry, can I sit in that pulpit? I was, I was stunned. <laughs> One of the brothers, amen, bless his heart, good brother uh, from Nigeria, baptized him about a year ago. He was the last Muslim in his family to become a Christian. And he said, I'm going to call my mother today in, in England and tell her today I'm going to be a Christian. And I said, wait till we get through. She's going to try to talk you out of it. <laughs> I said, brother, I told you, you to meet these people there from Florence, Alabama. I shook the man's hand. He said, no, no, it's my name. I said, Harvey. I looked over beside him. Oh, no. Why are you doing up here? Crayus and Alabama Chris is two souls. <laughs> Crayus. I did not know you were up here. We were in Mount Holly. We Googled the church, and this one was the closest one out of the three. You were the preacher. I was like, brother, you were my English teacher. Oh, no. I said, church, I can tell it. And I told you all of our, co most of our coaches, our principal, except for the vice principal, our teachers were members of the Church of Christ. I said, Joyce Taylor, Cheryl Clark, Miss Hargett here, uh, coach, I mean, uh, Principal Brewer was a member of the church. And you can ask her about it. Don't ask her about what I was doing. Ask her about uh, the Christian <laughs> Amen. So they were asking about me. And, uh, she went home and I talked to my track coach last week, amen, and, 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 and her, and boy, we, we're just going to do some things. We're going to do some things together. She was encouraged and blessed that one of her little crazy students, amen, uh, it was a blessing. But what I'm trying to get you to see, the next person that bless you might be somebody that you were mad at in high school. Mm -hmm. Look for it. Look for it. Look for opportunities of greatness. Look for hints of God's glory and greatness and watch him bring it to fruition. If you're not a member of the church tonight, you probably won't be able to see what I'm talking about. That's why you need to be a member. You need to be on the Lord's side. You need to be in the Lord's army. How do I get in there? Hear the gospel of Christ and believe it. Elisha followed the man of God so he could get the instructions of God. 
That's what this congregation is here for, to give you the instruction of God. Yeah. Ephesians 3 and 10, the manifold wisdom of God is to be made known through the church. If you're a part of the church, this is what we're here for, to bless this community with the manifold wisdom of God. Yeah. And he would have you, first of all, to be on his team. How do I get on this team? Here's the gospel and believe in Acts 15 and 7. Peter said, brother, you know, with one little God be chosen among, the Gentile, among us that the Gentile by my mouth to hear the words of the gospel and believe. That's what we have to do. We have to hear the words of the gospel, the good news of the gospel. God still. Jesus came. He was uh, crucified. He was buried, but he rose again. And he yes. was the son of God. Yes. If you need to believe that. And then repent of your sins, Luke 13 and 3. All you will perish, Jesus himself said. Confess Christ to be God's son. Romans 10 and 10, the Bible says, With the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then be baptized in what? All right. <laughs> I always go back and touch the water. Y'all got to, I can't, I have to step on that chair. That's just uncool. One of those, I uncool by one's peers with one. <laughs> and I just make sure some water's in there. Amen. Baptized in water. Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian unit. Acts chapter 8, Philip was preaching to him and he started at chapter, verse number 35 and he preached unto him, Jesus, and when they came to a certain water, yes. yeah, right. the unit said, see, here is water. Can I be baptized? Philip said, if you believe, you may. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. And when he did that, he was baptized. Yes. Amen. Amen. The like figure, 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21, like Noah who built the ark and eight souls were saved by water. Baptism, but also now save us. Water. Not because I said so, but because God said so. Galatians 3 and 26. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, you must have faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. When you're baptized in Christ, you put him on. Brother Clay used to say, you can't get the best of this coat by just feeling. Oh, it feels it. so good. <laughs> so good, he said, I just feel the Lord. He feels so good. I just feel him all over. But if you're not in it, he's not all over. You cannot get the blessing of this coat by looking at him. Look at him. It looks so good. That's my coat. That's my Lord. You won't get the blessing. That's looking at him. Don't Jesus look so good. You got to put it on. You need to put him on tonight. Amen. Amen. If you need prayer, and pray off within your behalf, or if you need to pray on someone else's behalf, this is the best place to do it. Yes, the Bible says the effects of prayer, fervent prayer, the rights of the bills, much. And there's got to be somebody righteous in here. Amen. You want to get a prayer through for somebody else. This is the place to do it. Yeah. Amen. And if you are a child of God and you would have to give to you this distance from God, you ought to come back tonight and confess your faults one to another. Jesus said, I'll forgive you. And my blood that's already in you because you're already in me yes. will continue to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you're standing in any case, come on right now. As we together stand and sing this song of invitation. Pray that God will show you something. Why would you ask the Savior to have?
that's a wonderful word and a wonderful song to leave out with tonight. Yes. Ask the Savior to help you. Yes. Brother Chris, you did exactly what we wanted you to do. Amen. 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 That's all right. That's all right. Let's celebrate. Preach unto us the word of God that we might see what God wants us to see. We thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. We are thankful for the preachers who are in the house, for the walker, for the congregations that are represented. Dorchester is in the house. Uh, who else is in the house? New Haven is in the house. Bridgeport. Manchester. Uh, who else? Southwest. Everybody's in the house. Amen. 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 And we invite you to ask Brother George if you will come. He's giving us our dismissal prayers. He's making his way uh, up front. He's one of the elders at Manchester. Amen. Amen. Good, uh, good friend of mine. Good, good brother. We went to stores together. Stores today. Didn't know where stores were, but we drove all the way up to store. I was glad they brought me back. Amen. Amen. Up to stores. Before I give it over to Brother George, we want to uh, remind you tonight. Uh, Oru Shabazz from the Harlem Church of Christ will be here tonight. Uh, we're just going to have a wonderful time. We're just going to go higher and higher. Uh, tonight is the last night to get your tickets for the dinner. They're going fast. They, I don't know how they started off, but I talked to the lady today. It's almost to capacity. So if you're going to get tickets, uh, you had best get them tonight. We just had a wonderful time tonight. Master Brother Harry, give us a verse of a song as uh, we make our way toward the back. And then after a verse of a song, the next voice you will hear be that of Brother George from the Manchester Church of Christ. Brother Harry. Get a rack of the churches and to let's join go us in home. the back. Everybody sing. Let's go home. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. 